My micro world ideas seem to be pretty popular. A lot of people liked them and wanted to see more. And then I stopped making them. At one point it kind of died out a little bit, but does that mean we can revisit it? Because there's one crucial theme we forgot. Christmas. Let's roll the intro and make one right away. I made a ton of micro worlds, 47 to be exact, and they were made as NFTs. Now, first of all, where usually we'd use the white template, today we are going dark mode. Let's run Photoshop and see where we can take this festive micro world. What beautiful name shall we give this? How about Christmas? It is genius. Today we are wearing the Christmas hat once again because my hair is a true disaster. It's just a bummer that as soon as Christmas is over, I can't use this as a tactic anymore. That's a problem for them. First, um, let's go and fill up the top and the sides. For the top, I'm gonna use this image, which is snow. Makes perfect sense. And first, I'm gonna make a super simple selection of this top square. There you go. And then I'm gonna click on the mask button beautiful i also decided i want to have some uh, water or in this case ice because it's frozen because it's hella cold so that i'm gonna put uh right here i guess and then i'm gonna make some sort of nice mask so we can make a river see just like this nice and icy okay that seems pretty good then i have two shapes this one and this one which i'm both gonna fill with uh snow as well i'm gonna put some right here and then obviously this cannot go too deep so let's cut it off right about here and below that we can put this rock textures to make it look like this is some sort of ground this is kind of nice honestly and then we need to make sure this snow kind of fades out into this rock. Not too much, but just a little bit so it looks a bit more natural. But of course, the ice also needs to be visible on the side. So let's go and put this image right here. And then we basically have to do the same thing we did with the snow. Make a nice shape, sort of like this there you go that should be pretty good it's a bit deep now let's make it a bit more shallow maybe more like this i feel like that's pretty good and then this entire layer i'm gonna darken see just like this not too much but a tiny little bit because this is what's gonna give it the 3d effect also i feel like we should make it a bit darker towards the bottom because I don't know, I just feel like that. Yes. And right here, I'm gonna make this look a bit higher than the waterline because I feel like that's exactly what we need to make this look a bit more high up. And in general, right here, we can make some tiny hills to give the landscape some uh, shape, land shape. And then all we basically have to do is the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm again gonna use this same rock image again. I'm gonna need some snow on there as well. Something like this. Beautiful. Gonna make the edge nice and realistic again. Of course, we all know how this goes. Now the only difference is this one has to be even darker than the first one. Something like this I feel like should be good. And again, the further down, the darker as well. See, and just like that you have, in my opinion, a pretty cool looking 3D landscape. And since this is snow, we may want to soften this edge just a tiny bit, not too much. Like the ice here, that should be super sharp, but the snow is just a bit more soft and a bit more, you know, so the transition is less harsh. There you go. Just like that. See, that makes it a little more realistic as well. Okay, and then what is next? Right on the edge of the ice here, I think we should add a tiny shadow to make sure it looks like the snow is laying on top of it instead of the other way around. And I think a simple thing like this could just fix that. Now let's start working on the top area. First, I have this beautiful, tiny, little cute house, which I'm gonna put somewhere on here. I'm thinking it should be reasonably big, something like this. As you can see, the perspective isn't exactly perfect. So for that, I'm gonna use some perspective warp. There you go. And using this, we can try warping the perspective just a little bit. See, something like this should be a bit better already. Then the wood of this house, I feel is a bit too green so i'm gonna make it a bit more reddish and warm using some hue and saturation there you go let's also paint the shadow areas of the house a bit darker as i feel like it's a bit too exposed i have a bunch of these guys so all of them i'm just gonna put down first because only then will i know where i should put them I moved some trees around and once they were all in the right spot, I started blending them in. I adjusted their shadows and added one on the left side since the light was mostly coming from the right. This same process I repeated on every single one. Mm. 
later I also added some shadows between the trees, making sure it looks like they're standing close next to each other. Same goes for the house. At the end I added a slightly blue tone to them, integrating them more into the scene. So now the biggest things are in here, but I do feel like we need some nice details, like for example, a car. And for that, I found this pickup, which I'm gonna place down right about here. Gonna make it maybe a bit smaller, like this. That's quite nice, actually. That definitely spices it up. Now, before doing the shadows, let's add some more elements. For example, some wood maybe lying around here, since it's in the middle of the woods. It only makes sense to have a fireplace in there. Let's see. And we can fix the perspective using some liquify. There you go. Just like that. And maybe a tiny bit smaller, like this. Um, what else? How about one of these? Just right next to the house, I guess, because that makes sense. I'm going to try and make this guy a bit darker, because that looks way more realistic. And then, I guess, let's just blend everything in right now. Just uh, make it look very nice and cohesive. I wanted this car to be red, since that's a nice Christmassy color. And once I had that sorted, I added some shadows below it. I made sure to put the wheels inside the snow as if it was standing here before it even started snowing. For the wood pile, I simply added some shadows too. First one on the wood itself, followed by the soft shadow it casts on the ground below. After adding some shadows to the lanterns as well, I tried making them lit up, but this didn't look all that fantastic. I guess the fact that it's daylight already doesn't really help. I mean, how effective is a streetlight during the day anyway? I thought something's missing, so I added Frosty the Snowman and did the usual stuff to it. Shadows and a little tad of coloring. This guy was followed by another tiny one. For a fun extra little detail, I decided to fill the back of the pickup truck with presents. All to make sure it's extra Christmassy. I did want those Christmas lights to be turned on though, so for those I made tiny little yellow bulbs. I put a subtle glow on those and this actually looked decent. Much better than the street lantern, that is for sure. Then I also thought it would be fun to add footsteps going from the car to the house. I did this using bevel and emboss in layer styles and this actually worked perfectly. Finally, the truck of course needs to be snowy as well, since we established it's been standing here since before it even started snowing. This is simple stuff, just a white brush. I think, altogether, this looks pretty good, so let's go and try adding a camera raw filter. Because, as you guys know, that always makes it 10 times better. So here we are, first of all, I'm gonna increase some of the clarity, there you go, for just a bit more detail. Then some more of the whites, and some more shadows. Some curves also never hurts, there you go, nice and detailed. We can also add some sharpening to make it very nice and crisp. It's winter, so we have to make it very nice and cold, a lot of blue. That's for sure. There you go. I feel like this is pretty nice. This is good. Let's go and hit OK and then we can re-add the text just like so and then we have a Christmas micro world. I guess that's pretty much it then. I was very curious what this would look like with a white standard template and actually it's it's a lot better so let's go and yeet this one in the trash. And for those interested in crypto art this one is now available as an NFT on my foundation page. The link is somewhere down below in the description. And then I guess that's it for today. If you like this video make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you enjoy my overall content feel very very free to subscribe that would actually mean the world to me. And then I hope I'll see you in my next video.